we good? Okay. Sound. Speedy. Um, camera. Rolling. Action. If you're a fan of shows like Star Trek or, or classic science fiction, I think you're going to become a fan of this too. I got involved in this project a little while back. It's called The Catherine Kimbridge Chronicles. It's based on a series of novels. The Catherine Kimbridge Chronicles tells the story of a futuristic Horatio Hornblower style character. A lot of thought was put into the uh, technology that exists in this universe. At its core, it's hardcore science fiction. It has space travel, alien encounters, things like that. It has a strong female lead. <coughs> what happened? Why did they stop firing at us? Catherine, or Cat, actually, that everybody calls her. Um, she is a captain of a ship. It's about Cat's voyage through space on a ship that she and her father built together. They actually developed a new ion engine for it, which means that mankind is almost to the point in technology where they can travel the galaxy and meet other intelligent life forms. Here's a character who thinks on her feet uh, in ways most people generally can't. Very smart when it comes to like quick decisions and everything, so um, I like that energy that she has about her. How long until impact? A person with a creative problem solver bent, but an uncompromising sense of morality and a deep and abiding <laughs> love of life. Uh, she's self-reliant with, you know, the small aid of Ben, her AI, which is the character that I play. Ben is an artificial intelligence that runs the ship with her. Ben's interesting because he's one of the early AI systems. At this point, mankind has accepted that artificial intelligence has gotten to a point where they have consciousness. He'll come up with a particular logistical solution and not understand its other human implications. And so there's a little bit of banter back and forth and it becomes really, really funny when, you know, when machines are attempting human humor <laughs> and it doesn't quite work or it's, uh, um, they don't know that they're being funny. And we've kind of gone with something that's near tech, something where you can actually see a holographic display similar to what we would see in terms of a, uh, of a computer screen that is literally floating in the air near her. I try with Catherine to show the best of humanity while at the same time showing that what is best is not limited to humanity. It's one thing to describe something in a book and it's another thing to try to present it visually. And so as we go through our development process with this trailer, uh, that's one of the things that we really work on, is to try to see if we can capture the spirit of what was written, but create something new and interesting for the audience. Attempting to protect Cat, the Yaren intercepts an enemy ship. We were just outside of Mars orbit, and all of a sudden an alien ship appears out of nowhere, you know, faster than any kind of speed that these people are familiar with, and starts firing upon our ship, the Arizona. So Cat is just taken completely unaware. And almost as quickly as it begins, another ship shows up, intervenes, and sacrifices themselves, uh, destroying the bad guys. And, but in so doing, spirals out of control and starts plummeting towards Mars. They take a hit trying to save Cat, and in return, she tries to save them. Do we have enough chemical thrusters left to maneuver under them and push them into a stable orbit? One of the main things that we explore in the story is the theme of self-sacrifice. And with Kat in particular, we have a character who, at her core, that's really one of the things that defines her. She's an extremely loyal person, and she'll really go to the extra mile to, to do what she has to do, even if it means an ultimate sacrifice. Would you like me to calculate the odds of success? Absolutely not. Ben, give me all you have on reverse thrusters. I'm afraid I cannot, Commander. Fuel reserves are depleted. What would it be when you're actually when it's just me and you're, you're staring at yourself and saying, okay, well, this is it. We will impact in 2.4 seconds. What I enjoy most about sci-fi is you just never really quite know what to expect. And you have such a, such a, a wide variety of subject matter because you can take most themes and subjects that we deal with in reality, but when you put them in the context of the otherworldly, 
it takes on a different tone. You start seeing these issues in a different light. So it's inspiring, and I think that's what a lot of people, why people gravitate towards sci-fi, and why I think sociologically it makes such a, a, a profound impact on people's lives. I think we are just like maybe a decade away from actually getting holograms to work on our phones or on our watches or something. So I really love that about science fiction. I grew up watching tons of sci-fi shows, you know, Star Trek, Next Generation, Stargate, Doctor Who, and to be working on something in that genre is just really interesting and fun. I envision a universe where humanity is constantly striving to be more than it is, to be better than it is. That humanity has the potential and even the destiny for greatness. I think the most fun thing about this is just to do an old-fashioned science fiction show. It's pure adventure. It's all the things that uh, inspire wonder in people. Every decade or so, uh, television has its, its Star Trek or Stargate or Farscape. All these things that resonate and strike a chord with people. And I think this is one of those shows that will do the same thing.